All right, so what you're looking at here is a 14-inch symbol procured at a local pawn shop. I have no idea the make or model, but what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and sand it down. Now, we're gonna go ahead and just speed up that process because this is the longest part of the process. Basically, you're just sanding it down. Doesn't really matter what direction. What you're trying to do is remove any varnishes as well as just you know expose raw metal because that'll make the reaction happen the best. And here I am just taking regular old paper towel, wiping extra residue off. You can see a little bit of that residue coming off. The idea is we're trying to prepare this surface to be really, really clean. And so part of that process is using basic ammonia. Um, ammonia is just a standard cleaning product. You might remember if you've ever used it that it's kind of stinky. It's part of the reason we're doing it outside. It's one of two processes that are stinky in this process. So um, regular old ammonia, just going in your standard spray bottle and uh, fill that up. Doesn't really matter how much. You are gonna use a pretty generous amount, however. Now, um, what I'm gonna do now is clean the surface. So it's gonna be repeated spraying and wiping. And what we're doing here is just, once again, making sure any oils from your fingers that may have been on there or any leftover residue uh, is being removed from the surface. We're trying to get a really, really clean surface. And you'll notice the paper towel will be blue. And if the paper towel is blue, which I probably show you in just a moment here, yep, there it is, um, that blue is means that you probably need to do some more cleaning. Uh, the idea is that that means it's working and then a, and a reaction is happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it, rinse and repeat, so to speak, um, and get that nice and clean. Uh, and this surface is gonna make the um, patina solution work the best and stick uh, for the longest and be the most permanent of applications. So yep, just cleaning it up, uh, making sure to get the edges, the sides, underneath the profile of the bell. You notice it's a pretty good amount of goo that I'm pulling up off of there, and you wouldn't think there's that much. So also I try to keep a clean workspace. Notice I'm cleaning underneath the symbol as well. And then really what I'm doing here is starting to uh, really uh, extra wipe it down so it's really dry. Uh, that does look like raw material, raw metal, so I think it's gonna be a good application. Uh, that's a regular paintbrush. Uh, and that's our patina solution. Now, what I'm doing is just gently stirring it. Nothing crazy here. You just want to get it to a nice, even viscosity. And I'm just going to set that aside for a brief moment. Um, and what I'm going to do is then take that same old ammonia spray bottle, and I'm going to go ahead and soak the surface with that ammonia. Now, I'm doing it pretty liberally here. Um, the idea is that that is going to create a stronger, faster, quicker reaction. You can use less. Um, it'll just take longer for the reaction to take place. Dip in the paintbrush. Notice the paintbrush is not dripping. It's not soaking wet. Just a pretty good amount, and you paint it right on. And look at that. It changes color instantly right before, before your eyes. This part of the video is not sped up, so you're watching the reaction happening in real time. You get this interesting smell, so do be cautious of that. However, um, you notice the effect of the coloration is happening really, really quickly, and that's what I adore about this product. The idea here is really whenever you want to stop the reaction, you can. So if you want it to hold into that green, you can go ahead and spray it with the solution I'm about to prepare in a moment, which is baking soda and water. Baking soda is a wonderful neutralizer. So mixed with water, when you spray it on the symbol, it'll stop the reaction so it won't go any further. Um, this current color is fine by me. I like a nice kind of bluish black like that. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, do it here with the baking soda. Really doesn't matter how much you're putting in. The idea is mostly you just want it to be a thorough amount. Um, so I'm going to do, I think, a couple tablespoons here. Nothing wild. And like I said, you can even see I'm dripping some of that um, baking soda onto the surface. You know, at this stage of the game, we've really already established our patina on that symbol pretty well. So uh, it can take a little bit of uh, outside abuse. That's just regular old water that I'm using. I do like to use bottled water because of its cleanliness. There's some, you know, hard water in certain cities uh, that you want to be cautious of. So I like using bottled water. I do recommend it. Um, however, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, baking soda will continue to neutralize. Key part of this step is actually shaking it and making sure that that baking soda is completely dissolved inside 
of the bottle. Um, and then I'm just going to spray liberally. And when I say liberally, I mean aggressively. Um, the reasoning is that I don't want to be physically removing uh, the patina solution, the re leftover residue and spill off. I want it to come off with the liquids. Um, the reason is that uh, that liquid is neutralizing the surface reaction. Uh, and so it's going to lock in that black you're seeing, well, that bluish black. And you'll also notice there are some uh, interesting discolorations and certain parts are darker, certain parts are lighter. Uh, it's very complex to get a patina to be absolutely perfect. If you've seen a patina symbol before, you'll notice that it's actually the variations that make them unique. So I'm just liberally spraying to make sure that all the liquid that's coming off is finally clear uh, instead of having any of that yellowy or greenish residue left over from the stinky patina solution. And you can let it air dry, I often do that. However, for this symbol, I'm just gonna wipe it down with paper towels because we're trying to do this pretty quickly so you can get an idea of how it's done. Um, so I'm just gonna wipe it down with paper towel. You'll also notice that there's some rings left. You can see the, the rings, uh, the lathing marks uh, from the original symbol. Um, that's because my sand job, I didn't go too, too thorough. As you saw, I just tried to do it pretty quickly. Uh, if you wanna be aggressive with this, you can. So just using maybe a grinder or even an electric sander is a fine way to um, you know remove those lines. I actually kinda like them, it reminds me of vinyl. Uh, in any regard, um, the idea here is we're just drying this surface. Now, by appearance, I can tell that that reaction has been completed um, simply because um, there's no um, you know, sort of sweat coming off it anymore. However, if you're doing it at home, you might need to do a couple of rinses. Um, often for my larger symbols, I do two or three rinses of the uh, baking soda solution just to make sure that reaction stopped because it will continue to go if you do not neutralize it. So also, you'll notice I do make sure to clean the bottom of it as well, um, that the, the, the reaction can continue to happen and have negative effects on your tone, or, or undesired or unexpected effects, rather. So the idea is you just want to stop that reaction, which we've done. So now, basically, since it's dry, it's a nice dry day outside, all I'm doing here is just applying regular old painter's tape. That's what I love about this process. These are all very easy, easy to get um, you know, tools to make this happen. So traditional basic painter's tape. Uh, I'm just gonna layer it on to a certain area. I'm not gonna do a full design. This is only a 14 inch symbol. To be honest, it doesn't sound that great. So I don't think I'm gonna try to sell it or anything. It's just more just for uh, demonstrative purposes. Uh, but the idea here is just laying down painter's tape and then that's a wonderful um, surface from which to stencil any design you like. So. You know, many of my designs are kinetic, designed to look cool while spinning, simply because of our uh, companion product, Spinball, uh, which of course you should check out at our website, www.spinball.com. And I'm just taking a regular old Exacto knife, some kind of ruler. You can really use anything to cut out, um, you know, a sticker, your band logo, words. Um, it's really up to you. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and make a simple geometric shape. So there's a triangle for you gonna peel that triangle out um, using the X-Acto knife and expose the surface that I want to, you know, appear shiny and create a high contrast. Um, this is so delightfully easy. Basically what we're doing now is taking uh, regular old scour pads. I've just, you know, cut out a small scour pad because I'm not doing a lot here. Uh, that's Barkeeper's Friend. Lots of drummers know that. Great for cleaning cymbals and polishing metal. I'm going to go ahead and shake that well, as it says, and I'm going to apply pretty reasonable amount, nothing crazy, um, and I'm just going to apply it, uh, dabbing it down uh, onto the surface. Now, since this is fresh, I know it'll be a quick, easy pull off. So basically, I'm just you know going with the flow. The idea is I'm not pushing into the corners; I'm pulling away from the corners, uh, so as to you know not have any. Uh, potential spillover. And notice I'm doing this reasonably quickly. Uh, you don't want the painter's tape to be completely soaked. That will result uh, in interesting patterns on the underside. However, that's done. Uh, pretty quick, grab paper towel and just wipe off that surface. And using the paper towel, I'm just going to do a little bit more aggressive polishing here uh, to get it nice and shiny. And that's it.
That's really it. You just pull off the painter's tape. Um, it'll expose your contrast. It's delightful. So imagine if that was your band logo or perhaps, um, you know, iconography of, you know, some uh, association you're affiliated with. Anyways, you go ahead and wipe that surface down completely um, and it's done. So I'm going to take off my gloves here in just a moment to demonstrate that I can rub my fingers across it uh, and it is indeed permanent. Now, I don't necessarily finish my symbols uh, using a polyurethane, but you could feel welcome to as well. So thanks a lot for tuning in.